morning and welcome to Hazel Park United Church of Christ on this 24th Sunday after Pentecost. It is so good to gather and to worship with you in this virtual space in this time. A couple of announcements before we begin this morning. Today is the last day to get your poinsettia order in. However, if we still find a stray order in the mail, we will for sure uh, complete that order and, and get those poinsettias so that we can make this space beautiful for the upcoming Advent season, which by the way, is the last Sunday in November. Last Sunday in November is the first Sunday in Advent. Can you believe it? I can't, I'm not quite there. In preparation for Advent, I invite you to um, grab some candles. Any old candle will do, grab four of them. And then um, make a circle with them. And then in the middle, put another candle um, for your Christ candle. If you've got blue candles, great. If you've got green candles, fine. Whatever candle you have in the house for, it will simply be a matter of symbolism so that we can count down to Christmas together in that season of anticipation that Advent is. So you're on the hunt, there's your assignment. Go get some candles and put it on your table or put it in a sacred space in your home so that we can go through the ritual of Advent and candle lighting together. That first Sunday in Advent is November 29th, and that's and we'll begin with the Sunday of Hope. Also, next week, your um, worship team is going to take a Sunday off, which means there's still worship, but there, you will see other worship leaders. The Minnesota Conference of the United Church of Christ has put together a worship service for Thanksgiving Sunday, and we will be sharing that service with you so that you can see someone else and it also gives us a bit of a break so that we can get geared up for Advent. So be sure to look in your daily connection, on YouTube, in all the various places and you will find that service there. As we get ready for worship, as we get our cup of coffee, our cup of tea, whatever we need to get settled in for this time, let us be thinking about Paul's words that we're going to be hearing in a moment about being children of the light and how we are to live in the present and into the future. The past is important, but how do we lean into that, uh, the life of now, the life of what is to come, and how we can prepare for it, dream about it, envision what can be, and how to do so with joy. So, without further ado, get everything that you need, and we will share responsibly in our call to worship. Let's take a moment and share responsibly in our call to worship this morning. The uh, words printed in bold or your cue will be those words that are printed on the bottom of the screen. We lift our eyes to you, O oh God. We lift our spirits in worship. We look to you seeking guidance and comfort. We look to you seeking healing and renewal. We look to you seeking mercy and grace. For we have had our fill of struggles and stress. We have had more than our fill of worrying and wandering. To you, O oh God, we lift our eyes and spirits with hope and confidence in your love. Be known to us as we worship and help us find rest in the light. And together let us pray. You have given us each many talents, gracious Creator, and we give thanks to you for such generosity and kindness. You have given us as a community many opportunities to reflect your light, wisdom, and love, and for this we give thanks. You have bestowed upon us opportunities to invest the gifts you have given us, to reach out in faithful joy, and to share from our abundance. And you have called us together in worship and invite us to be accountable to you for our lives and our love. Be with us as we gather and help us to boldly proclaim the ways we have shared your love through your gifts you have given us. Hear our songs, our prayers, and silences as testimony of our stewardship and bless us as we worship. Increase our strength and courage through this time, we pray. Amen. We now take a moment to sing our first hymn, and thanks to Sammy for sharing her gift of music with us this morning.
We now come to a time to confess, a time in which we can gather together as a community of faith to confess together, to pray together, to, to be in reconciliation together, and then hear words of assurance that God is with us in this journey. Let's share responsibly in this prayer of confession this morning. You bestowed upon us many talents, and we confess we have often squandered them. You gave us lands and seas, mountains and plains, and we confess we have polluted and allowed for their demise. You gave us diversity in ethnicity, culture, and race, and we confess we have often used these to uphold and support division. You gave us creatures and plants, flora and fauna beyond imagining, and we confess we have consumed and overtaken habitats, allowing whole species to disappear. You gave us humanity in miraculous diversity. We confess we have failed to invest in this beauty and celebrate it, and have allowed prejudice and judgment to create suffering for too many. You entrusted us with so much, and yet we allowed our fears to overtake us and failed to bring new life in the abundance possible in your love. Forgive us, holy wisdom, and teach us again how to trust in you, how to stay focused in a way, and how to live in the hopeful knowledge that you will multiply our light and be with us all the ways. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. And let us hear these words of assurance. As we turn to God in confession, God turns to us in joy. God offers us abundant life. Let us embrace it, celebrate it, multiply it, and rejoice, for God's investment in us never ends. Amen. And now we come to a time to hear what the Holy, Script, Holy Spirit has to say to us through the scriptures. And we turn to Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 22, Paul and the early church are aware of the thin line between the present and the inbreaking of God's future. Paul's encouragement is clear. Be strong. Be ready. Be ready to participate in the realm of God's justice and liberation. No one needs to go it alone. A community of faith is there to encourage and to build each other up. Let's take a moment then to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us on this Sunday. And thanks to Bonnie for reading. Good morning. Hear these words from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. Now concerning the times and the seasons, dear siblings, you do not need to have anything written to you, but, you're <clears throat> but you yourselves know very well the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction, destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in the night for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not the night. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us awake and be sober, for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are dark, are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for our helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has disdained us from the wrath, but, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other <clears throat> as indeed you are doing. But we appeal to you, dear siblings, to respect those who labor among you 
and have <clears throat> charge of you in the Lord, and the abomish you, esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, beloved, to abolish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help <clears throat> the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of them repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything, hold fast what is good, and abstain for, <clears throat> from every form of evil. Here ends this reading. Paul is urging us to consider how we are living rather than when the day of the Lord will rise and arrive. The focus is on now and the future. Of course, the past is, is important. It helps inform us. But we're also invited in this moment to lean in, to lean into each other, to understand what we need from each other, so that we can make good decisions to move forward in faith together. I'd like to share with you uh, this same passage, um, but written um, from the message. It's written by Eugene Peterson, and it is in story form. And I appreciate how he lays this out for us this morning. And he writes, I don't think, friends, that I need to deal with the question of when all this is going to happen. You know as well, as I, that the day of the Lord's coming can't be posted on our calendars. He won't call ahead and make an appointment any more than a burglar would. About the time everybody's walking around complacently congratulating each other, we sure got it made, now we can take it easy, suddenly everything will fall apart. It's going to come as suddenly and inescapably as birth pangs to a pregnant woman. But friends, you are not in the night. So how could you be taken off guard by any of this? You're sons of light, daughters of day. We live under wide open skies and know where we stand. So let's not sleepwalk through life like those others. Let's keep our eyes open and be smart. People sleep at night and get drunk at night, but not us. Since we're creatures of day, let's act like it. Walk out into the daylight, sober, dressed up in faith, love, and the hope of salvation. God didn't set us up for an angry rejection, but for salvation by Jesus the Christ. Jesus died a death that triggered life. Whether we're awake with the living or asleep with the dead, we're alive with Christ. So speak encouraging words to one another. Build up hope so you'll all be together in this. No one's left out. No one is left behind. I know you're already doing this. Just keep on doing it. And then he continues to say, and now friends, we ask you to honor those leaders who work so hard for you you have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. Get along among yourselves, each of you doing your part. Our counsel is that you warn the freeloaders to get a move on, gently encourage the stragglers, and reach out for the exhausted, pulling them to their feet. Be patient with each person attentive to individual needs, and be careful that when you get on each other's nerves, you don't snap at each other. Look for the best in each other and always do your best to bring it out. Be cheerful no matter what. 
Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is what God wants us to do as we belong in Christ Jesus. And don't suppress the Spirit. Don't stifle those who have a word from Jesus. On the other hand, don't be gullible. Check out everything and keep only what's good and throw out anything tainted with evil. I share these words with you as they pretty cut, they cut to the chase. They invite us to live into community together and to do so in joy, to celebrate, to celebrate those things that we have figured out how to do well, but then also to pull each other up when things aren't going so well. It's a mark of what it means to be in community together. As a country, we have faced a great deal of division, and now we are trying to figure out our footing again as we got results from an election, as we see things play out in our world. How can we pull each other together? How can we pull each other up and say, you neighbor, I love you for who you are and what you bring to the table? That's what Paul's talking about. And it's not always easy. We know that to be fundamentally true with the choices with, that we make, with the decisions that we are faced. We know that in the midst of, of it all, we are children of the light, even when that light so very far away is just a speck in the night. We know that Christ walks with us and shines that light upon us so that we can continue to do the work that we are called to do. Martha Moore Keish, in an article written in the Christian Century in 2014, had written that we are already children of the day. The day of the Lord is not just past or future, but the day in which we already live, the one in which Jesus has already come to expose our persistent patterns of violence and to lead us in a new way of living that refuses to participate in such destruction. Folks, we are right smack dab in, in it. Not only did we live through this election cycle, but we continue to live on in a pandemic and we continue to be community in this virtual way. So my friends, as we sit in our living rooms today or at our kitchen tables, as we take our cups of coffee in hand, and as we look into the eyes of a loved one or call up a dear friend, may we be mindful that we are in this boat together, that we do this work consistently out of love and in light, and we know that the love of Christ will lead us on our way. God's light be with you. Christ's light shine upon you. Amen. Good morning. Today we're going to cover 2000 to 2009. In July of 2000, Judy Schultz joined Hazel Park as Director of Health and Family Ministry. She was a strong advocate for children and youth with a focus on intergenerational worship. Maintenance of the building became an ever-increasing focus for the congregation. There were capital fund drives to raise funds for a multitude of projects, from the purchase of new furnaces and repairing the parking lot to replacing roofs and improvements to the fireside room. In 2002, Hazel Park partnered with Episcopal Community Services to provide an East Metro location for Ready for Success, a charitable program for women entering or returning to the workplace. We provided space for gently used professional looking clothing, coats and shoes, and we also provided volunteers to guide women with their selections. We continued to actively reach out to our neighborhood and began looking on a, ch on a church work, uh, website in 2005. We also continued to look for additional uses for the building. Pastor Nichols was called to New Spirit UCC in Savage, Minnesota and left Hazel Park in February of 2006. He had been pastor for nearly 14 years, the second longest pastoral term in our history, with Jack Hill being the longest. Interim pastor Nancy Swanson joined us in late February and became, began the work of the interim time. She guided us in a review of our bylaws and policies, 
updating the membership roles, and facilitated making group conversations on where we have been and where we wish to go. In 2006, we created a parish nurse position for outreach to our homebound members and leveraged Minnesota Conference resources to help in planning our Christian education program. The Transitional Steering Committee created a church profile and an action plan. Judy Schultz left in August after six years of enthusiastic service. We had not had summer programs for children in many years. Based on the work we did with the conference, we posted a vacation Bible school, or hosted a vacation Bible school in June of 2007 in the evening. We wondered if any neighborhood children would come, and they did. Over 32 children attended. It led to an evening event every month with children's programming and a meal served. In late 2008, after nearly two years of work by our pastoral uh, search committee, Reverend Sarah Morris accepted our call. Reverend Sarah graduated from United Theological Seminary of the Twin Cities and was serving at Bethel United Church of Christ in Eckhart, Wisconsin. Her husband, Tim, was already living in the metro area, so they were able to reunite at their home in Roseville. Reverend Sarah gave her first sermon in January 11, 2009. During this decade, the Women's Fellowship continued hosting rummage sales, Red Cross blood drives, and the Spring Salad Luncheon. Hazel Park Church continued to provide a concert venue for the Bauman Fine Arts Series, and the congregation maintained our five for five church status by giving to the five major fundraisers of the UCC. I hope you are all well, and I look forward to presenting our last history moment next month. Our ministry moment for this month is to highlight the work of the Listening House. The Listening House is based out of a First English Lutheran Church, um, which is on Moriah, um, which is off of 7th Street, and it's here in St. Paul. And they are offering a space to uh, individuals who need a warm place, a place to meet with friends, a warm cup of coffee. They have availability for a telephone and internet use. They are a place that in its name says a place to listen, listening house. We have been contributing funds and donating items to the listening house for many years. Um, the recent word is that instead of donations, they would appreciate donations as well as cash. So if, it's, if this is something that you are interested, interested in supporting, you can send your offerings to the church in the memo line, the listening house, and we will forward those gifts to them. And we will also ensure that if you have any items, scarves, hats, gloves, we will make sure that those items as well get to the listening house. Those items that you have, if you could ensure them, uh, getting them here by the last Sunday in November, and then we'll just load everything up and take it on down. And we'll do so in a very safe way in light of COVID. Thank you for your gifts, all of your gifts that you give to the life of the church and for its ministries that we support, for we are so much better together than apart. Let's share responsibly in our prayer, our offertory prayer. Children of light, richness and blessings are ours. Now the time is ours. Isn't it exciting? Met by God in the holiness of this space, inspired by God's word, God's gifts, God's love, encouraged by the presence and commitment of everyone else around us. Let's do something. Let's try something new. We've given before, we've given to the church, let's keep giving, but let's give something new. Maybe it means that we add a few dollars to our usual pledge. Maybe it means that we add a pledge of time that we haven't included before. Maybe it means that we make a commitment of giving for the first time ever. Now is the time to do something new, something new about God's abundant gifts to us. Let us pray. O oh God, we have come, and what a delight it has been. We have come before your table with gifts, gifts of ourselves, gifts of risk, gifts of newness, gifts of trust. 
We thank you for the chance to give and pray that we and all whom our gifts bless will never be the same. Through our greatest gift, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. And now we do come to a time of prayer, a time in which we can lift up our joys and concerns that are in our hearts and minds, and I invite you to share any prayers in the comments section below. A few prayers that I'd like to lift up on this day. Prayers for the family of Iris Shell. Iris passed away uh, this week, this past week. So prayers to her family as they grieve for her loss. Prayers for Judy McIntyre, who has been hospitalized. Prayers of comfort and care for her. We also pray, pray for our dear friend Bud Shent, who has not been feeling well and has entered into hospice care. We hold all of these individuals, those named and those who are on our hearts on this day, as we come to a gathering and into an attitude of prayer. Living with joy, loving God, you have given us song. Help us to invest in this gift and sing with abandon. You have given us dance. Help us to invest in this gift and move our bodies with joyful exuberance. You have given us a natural world to care for. Help us to invest in this gift and plant seeds, protect habitat, decrease our carbon footprint, and relish in the delights of your harvest. You have given us responsibilities. Help us to invest in these gifts by recognizing them not as burdens, but as blessings and opportunities to show you our love and devotion. You have given us relationships. Help us to invest in these gifts and discover how they offer us new dimensions to our souls. Help us to honor and cherish everyone you have given as community. Help us to invest in this gift and open the doors wide to a need, any in need of our communion of a safe harbor and the nourishment of welcome. You have given us your Holy Spirit. Help us to invest in this gift and be a people of justice, peace, and renewal. We thank you, great and gracious God, for all these gifts of our lives. May we invest them wisely and joyfully as we come to you to say the prayer you taught us to pray, beginning, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to our final hymn for today, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. And again, thanks to Sammy for singing today. Star 
shed its beams around me in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river the cross O Lamb of God bring it scenes before me help me walk from day to day with its shadow o'er me in the cross in the cross be Should soul shall find rest beyond the river. And now may God bless you on this day. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God's light continue to be with you as we journey forth together in peace. Go in this peace of Christ, my friends, and let the people say, Amen.